What's up, everybody? Welcome back to your favorite New York Jets subscription podcast, Badlands. I'm your host, Joe Caparoso, joined as always by Connor Rogers. 15 days from the NFL draft, fresh off recording, 30 minutes of mock draft takes for War Room. If you're not in War Room yet, now is the time because the draft guide is dropping in less than a week from the time you're listening to this. Connor still has a pulse. He's going to have somewhere between 100 and 200 reports along with Meigs and Greg and Dan. It's draft guide season. It's draft season. Connor, how you doing? How you feeling? Good. What's better than this right now? I mean, draft season, grinding the scouting reports right now. The guide is looking pristine. All is well right now. And I know we're going to have a hot topic today that there is no right answer to. No matter how you rank the Jets roster right now, which is fun because the Jets on paper are really good, really fun. There is so it's one of those things that at the time it seems like such a good idea to tweet. And then you realize there's no way to properly discuss this without doing it over a longer podcast format. So I'm pretty pumped yes. up for this. Yeah, my brain kind of broke when Will and I were trying to figure out like who are the 10 best Jets right now. So I was tweeting about it a little bit, like got some good back and forth on Twitter. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I do a somewhat different exercise, which is basically rank their starters one through 22. And for a starting lineup, you know, I did basically, you know, 11 personnel on offense and their nickel personnel on defense. So you'll see that reflected in the rankings. Going to bounce them off you. We're going to talk through the list and then we'll put a bow on, you know, some other little pieces of news here. Quick reminder, BadlandsToj.com. Tickets for the draft party, live podcasts, raffles, food, the whole deal. Come hang out. Reds, right by MetLife Stadium. You know where it is. Couldn't be easier. It's a Jets bar, so come on now. Um, all right. So the way I did this, and I emailed this to you earlier today, along with my mock draft, which we, which we got to work through on War Room, is basically this is the Jets starters ranked, assuming they are healthy, and assuming where they rank league-wide to their peers. So it's not like who is like the actual, like this player is better than this player. It's like, how does this person rank as a starter comparatively to other starters at their position? Right. Um, and I did one through 22. And I think this is generally covers what their starting lineup is right now. And I'll, I'll go through them a couple at a time and like, we'll pause and, and we'll debate out some of these spots. So number one, I put sauce Gardner because I would say he's the best cornerback in football. And I think right now, of all the players in the Jets roster, he has the clearest claim to being the best individual player in the NFL at his position. So I he is I gave him the number one spot. I gave Tyron Smith the number two spot because if healthy, which we're assuming, I don't think he's any worse than the top three left tackle in football. And the number three, I have Quinn and Williams, who I would say is a top three interior defensive lineman in football. So what do you think of those top three? And is Sauce currently the best cornerback in football going into the 2024 season? This is interesting. And it's, this makes it a lot harder. Like when I tweeted my response to you in my top 10, it was, it was a style of who are just like best players, right? Not at their, by their position group across the league or not as in necessarily the most important. Cause I think I had Brees at number two, but if Brees got hurt, Jets would be in big trouble, but if the Jets have a capable backup running back, he's not more important than even like Quinn Williams. It's a really weird balance. So I ranked it just as how good are you at the sport? So dr cut and dried. And this exercise of ranking them by how they stack with their league wide peers totally changes the way it's stacked where sauce definitely has an argument. I mean, I would think. I would say the only two guys that have an argument to be the best at their position on the Jets is Sauce and Brees. And it's funny because I think Aaron Donald retired. So Quinnen is, he's up there. He's really up there. Like Dexter Lawrence and Chris, Chris Jones, Jones like, right? Yeah. That's kind of who you think. Like you, yeah. then you get into the world you know, you get into a world where it could level out. Like it was interesting. Um, the Panthers just paid Derek Brown and like you know, Quinn and he got paid, paid. Quinn's a much better player than him. Definitely a better pass rusher for sure. So yeah, I think that, and then sauce, I think it's the same thing for sauce though. I think this is dead even because I think with sauce, you have Sertan, 
AJ Terrell. And I know people don't like doing this, but it's a good way to kind of go off the list. Cause I don't, I, let me be very clear. I don't think this is a perfect science at all, but let's see how PFF graded corners in coverage last year. So we'll go by, we'll put in, uh, this will be a really interesting exercise. We'll put in at least a hundred snaps and it's probably going to take a while to load because there's only like 9 trillion corners in the NFL. Like you would think, <laughs> I mean, Craig James made the, might've made the list somewhere in there. Yeah, Craig James. <laughs> okay. Hayes. Here we go. So Jalen Johnson was 91.9. Sauce Gardner was 91.6. And then it right gets in, like Charvarius Ward. And you know, people, shit on pff grades and like i don't think it's a perfect science at all but when you say these names it's like yeah those are probably the guys that are the best corners in the nfl jalen johnson sauce gardner Traveris ward's really really good um deron bland is where it starts to get like deron bland had all the picks but deron bland was also feast or famine i don't think he so yeah i mean that's where you, you kind of get into i still think sertan is is right up there as well JC Horn just hasn't able to stay healthy when he's healthy. He's elite. Yeah, I, I think he makes a good argument. I think it makes a good argument that Sauce would be number one because he has the strongest argument to be the best player at his position. So Quinn's close. Down, yeah, I mean it's 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 exciting to have a top three like this. And then again, we look at I'm looking at four to four to seven here. So I have Brees Hall at number four because I would say bot, top three running back in football. You want to put McCaffrey? He, he might be the best. Now. Like, I think he will, if he's healthy, I think he will have a claim to being the best at the end of the season. For now, I understand having McCaffrey at one. I am sure other people would, I don't know, tr maybe some people try to make an argument for Jonathan Taylor. That seems a little silly. Yeah, yeah, I can't do yeah. that. I So, Brees, you know, at, at a floor is a top three running back in football. I have Rodgers at five because he's, depending on your flavor or your rankings, I don't know. He's somewhere between a top four and top seven quarterback in the league right now. It's hard because he didn't play last year. And the year before last wasn't like his best year. You but know, then you had like a run of winning MVP. Exactly. So it's like, you know, most people probably have, everyone will have Mahomes one as they should. And then it's like, is it Josh Allen? Is it Burrow? Burrow. Is it Jackson. Right. Uh, Herbert. You know, it depends. Is it not Jalen Hurts coming off that year? But, you know, Rodgers is going to be in most people's, like, you could be three or four for some people, and at the bottom, maybe, like, seven or eight. So he's up there. Um, six, I have Son Reddick, who is, I don't know, a top five to eight edge rusher in the league-ish. I mean, I don't think that's being a homer. I feel like he's up in that discussion. Certainly a top ten edge rusher. And then I have Garrett at number seven as, like, a top – seven to 12 wide receiver, which is a little projection. Because, that one's tougher. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little projection, but I say he's had back to back a thousand yard seasons with a horrific quarterback situation. That's fair. So, yeah. His touchdown numbers, you know, aren't there guys only scored like three or four touchdowns a season. Quarterback has a lot to do with that. Not having a, you know, a capable starter opposite of him, you know, based on like talent and projection going forward. If Aaron Rodgers plays 15, 16, 17 games next year, Feels like without question, he's going to be a top 10 receiver in the league. Uh, and then I'll close it out in this section with Quincy Williams, who I have number eight as, you know, somewhere between the top three to seven inside linebacker in football. Um, that's how I have the top eight currently ranked. Well, Quincy's funny, right? Because he was an all pro. Yeah. Like that. And like, usually you judge and it's only one season, but usually you judge who is the best in their position at the league. You judge it by the all pro. I have so, him ahead of Mosley, which feels weird, but like only I, one spot. I did have Mosley at nine as a spoiler. Yeah. Quincy's a weird one because like if you want to argue against Quincy, you sit there and go, well, he's in his dream scheme next to his borderline dream counterpart that allows him to do the things that makes him great and covers up for his deficiencies. But on the flip side... Those deficiencies have gotten so much smaller over the last year and a half. He, the dream scheme he's in is kind of more of the modern way defense is played in the NFL. So he's one where he probably by this exercise is probably too low on the list. Like I Quincy's Quincy's closer be, to being the best linebacker in football than Garrett Wilson is to being the top receiver or Hassan Reddick is being the top edge. And Aaron Rod maybe even Aaron Rodgers is to being the top quarterback. Is that crazy? 
I mean, I don't think it is considering what we were saying about Quincy 12 months ago. It does feel crazy, but he was that <laughs> good. Right. Year. He, like he was, I think we said this pretty consistently, like throughout the season, like the first eight, nine weeks of the year, he was unquestionably the Jets best player. Like he was jumping off the page, off the film every single week. And it was like, wow, that is the best player on their team at this exact moment until right. Brees like really got going down the stretch. And I think Brees, you know, kind of took that. You can make a case that, you know, Sauce also had stretches in there as well. But it did feel weird putting Quincy ahead of Mosley, who I had at nine. But he's in his prime. He's coming off an exceptional season. And if he builds on it, like, I think you'll start having people being like, is this guy the best, like, linebacker in football right now? Which, right. considering the guy he was two years ago, is kind of crazy. But it's also a testament to the Jets' defensive staff and Robert Sala, who we, you know, a lot of negative stuff. Well, one thing they could do is develop defensive players and develop linebackers because when the Jets claimed Quincy Williams off waivers, we're like, like he was overdrafted and like, this isn't really working. And is this like a friendly contract to help keep Quinn in? And he was goddamn awesome. Last it's year. amazing. And, you know, he's definitely, you know, in the top 10 and you can make a case that eight is too low considering who else is on this team. That, that is quite a change. Um, so I had Mosley at nine, and now we get into ten. I had Morgan Moses at ten. Well, I, not I, to I, cut you off, yeah. I do want to. I do want to touch on Hassan Reddick. Okay. So let's, where is he? Where is he league wide as an edge rusher? I said somewhere between five and ten. Let's talk about who has to be better than him: Miles Garrett. Yep. Micah Parsons. Watt. Nick Bo- Nick Bosa, T.J. Watt, Max Crosby. Those five yep. have to be better than him, right? Yep. After that. I mean, Hutchinson, probably. Yep. Yeah, he he might be seven. Yeah. He might he might be number seven. It's he's like if he's not seven, then he's like I don't know. Daniel nine. Daniel Hunter. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about Hunter. He he's you're right. He's like in the nine to ten range, and it's sneaky. You're like, whoa, Hassan Reddick really is a top ten ish edge. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I had to just touch on that one. No, I mean, it's that type of impact addition at this stage, based on what we've seen in the last two years, that's a fair spot to put him. Number 10, I have Morgan Moses. I figured he's like about a top 10-ish right tackle in the NFL, maybe a top 11, top 12, but, you know, proven to be in that range. I had AVT one spot behind him at 11 because just because of the injuries. Like, I have him as like, He's probably like a top 10 to 15 interior offensive lineman. It's hard to give him an exact spot. He's played everywhere. The talent's there. The resume isn't there yet. So I have him at 11. I had Michael Carter as a top, he's a top three, top two slot corner in football. It's just slot corner. So it's hard for me to put him above, you know, any of the other guys I mentioned. Number 13, I had Jermaine as like a top. 15 to 25 edge. He always had the one good season. Hasn't had a double digit sack season. Yet. Yeah. Um, so I had him at 13 and then 14. I had DJ Reed has like a top 20 ish corner coming off a good year. Not quite as good as two years ago. So that next stretch after Mosley, Morgan Moses, AVT, Michael Carter, Jermaine and DJ Reed, 10 through 14. Yeah. Not a, 